Greetings and welcome to a rare appearance of my face. No, this is not a punishment for you guys. This is just an introduction uh, to tell you guys that what you're about to see is some really old footage from back when I had a camera that actually worked kind of in HD and had focus and everything like that. But it's just for the first five minutes or so, then we're gonna go back to this Logitech webcam that we usually use with like as you can see probably kind of crappy quality but it's all I can afford but it is time to pick up this guy again and uh, this time we're gonna finish the F Renault FT17 um, started as a buddy build and uh, was gonna take a long time I always knew that but it kind of took a back burner, back burner, took a back seat to my beard is weird. Kind of took the back seat to another build and then another build and then another build and then another build. And I keep looking at the screen instead of the camera there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, but this time it's time to finish it off and uh, make a good job of it. So just want to tell you guys. You advise what you're about to see for the next five minutes is really old footage and I just had a brief look at what I was doing there. I was doing some tools and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's there for you guys to watch it and then we'll be back with normal scheduling, I guess. So anyways, enjoy it. Well, we're back with the FT-17 after God knows how long. It's been since the last time I worked on this, but it is now time to do some small fiddly stuff. And as you can see, since the last time, I have started painting the PE strap that goes in the uh, in the turret for the seat seat strap or whatever you call this. I'm just going for a plain brown leather look. And also I have cut the tools of the spruce and painted the sledgehammer with the base track primer there, as you can see. And, and now I'm getting ready to paint the wooden handles for the tools and a uh, wooden effect or wood effect is something that I have struggled with in the past. And uh, I don't really know how to make it look good. And what I always have a problem with when I'm doing something wood like is that uh, you have to decide how dark you want the wood to look. Because there's like many types of wood available, and then there's varnishes and lacquers and all that kind of stuff. Although I would believe the, these would not have any of that. And if they would have been left outside, they would probably be probably be like brown grayish, perhaps in color. But for this particular build, I've decided I want to go for like a dark brown thing. So uh, this is going to be an experiment of sorts in uh, wood colors, but. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with uh, Vallejo 7180, uh, the rust color. It is sort of like a brown orange hue to it. And then I'm just going to light, not lightly, heavily apply uh, Vallejo Umber wash, which is also like orangey brown color. When it's in thin layers, you can't really see see it right now. But yeah, it's not quite black, but it's like more like yeah, orange hue to it, I think, uh, or brownish hue even. So, anyways, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna see how that turns out, and if I don't like it, then I can just paint over it some other kind of color, and then we we'll go for the grayish ugly uh, wood that has been outside unprotected.
protect it from the elements. So yeah, also I have to put some little rust on the sledgehammer there, and I'm gonna make the ends shiny. Because, yeah, that's how sledgehammers look, right? I think. So I painted on the the Vallejo rust color onto the handles and to me it actually looks like the perfect base color for uh, wooden handles and wood in general. Don't know how much you can see there. But yeah, like if you're going for a uh, uh, clean like vibrant color build or whatever I'm trying to say here you could just put on the Vallejo rust color and it looks pretty good as uh, a wood wooden handle of like a medium dark wood not too dark not too light just perfect for like uh, a fresh handle or shaft on a slash hammer or shovel or anything like that but, since I'm doing a more dirty tank that has been out in the war for some time, uh, of course I'm gonna put the wash on, trying to make it look a little bit more dirty. Now I got the, got the tools all painted up, and I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, they're quite dark looking. And that's exactly what I was going for. And they also have like a really subtle uh, rust effect there going on. So the camera is not quite picking up. But yeah, anyways, I'll pull some, put some pictures in the video too. So now that I have my tools painted, uh, it's time to move on to some photo etch. And uh, I already put the seat strap into the turret, as you can see here. And uh, I had to repaint that because the paint cracked when I was bending it. It's not super uh, central, but it does the job it's supposed to do. And now there's this. There's this time that I'm going to curse myself for not having done this photo etch, photo etch uh, sooner. Uh, these parts, the straps that hold in the pioneering tools, um, focus, thank you. Uh, as you can see, they're quite small. And Here's one, there's the other one. And I need to put them into these little brackets on the side here that hold the tools in place. And now the focus is back out. So yeah, these little little dudes here and here hold the tools in place like so. <sighs> yep. Like that, and the shovel comes on top of that, and then I need to strap them all in using these tiny straps and uh, yeah I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it is turning out to be to actually put those straps in but uh, I'm gonna give it a go if not if it doesn't work I'm just gonna yeah I don't know glue the tools in there I <laughs> guess mistakes were made Yep, I got it on there. Uh, trying to focus this in. So I cheated a little bit. Uh, I put the tracks on there just and the turret because I just wanted to see how it looked like. But I cheated a little bit and I didn't do them like from underneath. I put them on from the top, the straps that is. And I got them to look what, semi decent, I guess. Uh, I'm at least happy with it. So 
Now I'm just going to paint up those straps and the buckles and I'm also going to paint up the tarp that goes on the back of the tank and I noticed uh, one of my chain hangers here from the ditch device has fallen off but <clears throat> I don't mind it the tarp will cover it up like so and uh, all is good in the world and yeah it's just we'll call it battle damage so yeah just gotta paint the tarp paint the straps and I think then I can move on to give it a wash I guess I'm gonna try out these uh, let's see if I have them somewhere around here excuse my awkwardness I had this box up earlier today yeah I'm gonna try these uh, life color liquid pigments uh, haven't really tried them before I've done the done the road dust or dark dust I can't remember when I did the uh, Tamiya uh, Impreza WRC car and I sprayed that on just for a general dust effect but uh, this time we're going for actual like rain streaks and, uh, and stuff like that so yeah also gonna try and use the suit one of this is called suit and uh, I was gonna try that as a wash I guess and uh, yeah, see how that turns out. So getting real close to the end here, I guess. So <clears throat> I've been experimenting a little bit with the uh, the life color liquid pigments and uh, giving it some streaks with the uh, uh, rain marks and uh, did a little bit of suit as well for a little darker stripes stripes uh streaks uh just been adding like streaks and stuff and then i took the tracks and i i uh got a wet brush and i got them all wet and nice and then i just dabbed on a little bit of the uh of the dark dust color <clears throat> to get a little dust effect <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, if I change the focus on the camera, still not that much. I'm hoping you can see this, but uh, where it wasn't wet enough, I got stains like that. But when it was wet enough, uh, it blends in quite nicely as just a dust effect. As you can see there so my thinking was and I can always go back because of the of the qualities of the liquid pigments I can always go back and re-wet this and they'll like dissolve again and uh, blend in even better uh, yeah so anyways my thinking is I'm gonna try and do a little bit here and there on the tank itself. I'm gonna take my fugly brush that I stole from my kids and just like <clears throat> where I would uh, imagine dirt would accumulate because I haven't really put any protective layer on top of the, the streaks that I've done so the water will actually uh, re Activated, <clears throat> I guess is the word. I got something in my throat. <laughs> I'm gonna do a cut and cough a little bit. Yep, <clears throat> back again. Uh, having some camera issues, <laughs> wasn't picking up any microphone, I guess. But, anyways, yeah, so I'm dabbing on a little bit of water where I want the dirt to accumulate, and I'll just use my water brush for my pigment. But it's a quick fix. You know, just have a little bit more dirty water. Yeah, so anyways, I'm dabbing it on here. I already put some liquid pigments in there when the camera wasn't working right. And uh, hopefully I'm getting like a dirt buildup. Focus. 
like a long list gets here. And yeah, it looks kind of invasive right now, but in reality, this is this dries a, a lot lighter than it looks right now. Unless, of course, I'm putting on too much. In which case, I have a ton of brushes and I can just come on with a dry brush and pick it up. Usually I can pick it up. But yeah, I'm gonna go over the rest of the tank like this a little bit. Not not the entire tank, just like <clears throat> on top here and where I want some dirt and dust to accumulate. And you can do a heavy, you can do a lightly, uh, basically any way you want it. But uh, yeah, because the liquid pigments have this remover and it completely removes the pigments if you want, want it so. And they're even, they're not that stuck on so you always have to like give them a coat of of clear to seal them in for yeah so they will keep cause yeah I use these guys on the uh, like I said before on the on the I don't know the I can't even focus on what I'm doing when I'm talking but yeah I use these guys on the uh, the Tamiya rally car that I did the other day and uh, and yeah that I didn't seal it in with anything and here's my test piece. I can still, like, if you can see this there, I can still activate it and work it around and remove it if I want to. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and and, and uh, do the rest of the tank like this as well. And I'll be back to you after that. And we'll see how it looks like. Right, so at this point in time, I believe it is time to let it dry off a little bit. And the colors are all off in the camera. I, I think it's time to let it dry off a little bit. I gotta reactivate this and uh, fix this a little bit. And then I guess it's time for a dull coat, matte coat, and put the tracks on and put some mud and dirt on it. And once that's done, uh, I reckon it's uh, it's finished. Finito, el dono. Okay, so I'm about to go add a little dirt to the FT-17. Uh, it's basically all done. I decided not to go ahead with the tarp. Uh, I just couldn't be bothered, really. But the tracks are on, and the matte coat is on. Uh, basically, I played around with the pigments, and uh, <laughs> kind of overdid it, I guess, but there seemed to be... Most of it seems to be disappeared. But there are some slight hints of it here and there, and the turret looks okay in person. But it is what it is, and I kind of like it where it is right now with like subtle, weather, subtle weathering from rain and, and that kind of stuff. So anyways, here's what I need to make the dirt. I've got actual dirt that I've meticulously scraped from the inside of uh, car wheels at work. So this is just road dust that settles on the inside of the of the wheel. I got some water and I got some mod, mod Podge. It's basically just uh, white glue water based so you can thin it with the water. And uh, yeah I'm just gonna mix this up like as I go. Just put a little bit of dirt in there and then I'm just gonna start, start with uh, adding white glue into it a little bit and it's been a long time since I opened this so it's kind of ruined 
and then I'm just gonna thin it with the water till we get the consistency that I like. Oh yeah, I think it's about time to go get a new bottle of this. Yeah, anyways, you guys get the point. I don't hardly have to show you how I do it. But I'm probably gonna do it anyways. Add a little bit of this into it. That's actually quite a lot of it. And well, this basically just uh, makes it so it it gets uh, sticky, and uh, it hard when it hardens, it hardens like rock hard and you're not gonna get this off again and also if you don't like this color it's kind of grayish brown grayish color you can always just add some paint to it as well and this is actually quite thick but it's enough of the white view at least I'm gonna add just a hint of water because I want it kind of, kind of thick for the for the first application because I looked at some pictures online of, of actual FT-17s and they had like not that much dirt up going on on top of them of course but there was quite a lot of build up going on in here inside the tracks and I wanna kinda replicate that and also then every single piece of track had had like uh, a build up going on around like, like so something like that so I'm gonna try and replicate that and I also went ahead and I bought some some grass green from army painter battlefields grass green it's basically just tiny pieces of green grass and I'm gonna sprinkle them on randomly after after I put in some dirt I guess so yeah, quite happy with just starting off kind of thick, and uh, then I'm gonna like dilute it a little bit more and get some streaks going because I saw where like wet dirt had been streaking down the side here, and it looked kind of cool. And yeah, anyways, you guys get the point. This is what I'm doing, just building it up a little bit here. And I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. It's kind of fiddly and will take some time. So when I come back, I'll have the dirt on there and we'll see if there's anything else that I want to do with it or if it will be finished. Yeah, so uh, moving quickly over what I'm doing here. I put on the dirt, I sprinkled some uh, grass on it. Like it's been running through a field or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is basically what it looks like now. So uh, the Mod Podge dirt dried like it's uh, wet looking a little bit. So I kind of like that look. Um, I put in like the, the unditching device here has been dragging along and perhaps went into a bank or something. And uh, focus, thank you. So I put a little dirt on top there and on the bottom. I actually went ahead and I had so much dirt left that I just dirtied up the bottom of the whole thing. I did dirt on every single track link as well. Uh, I smudged some dirt on the inside also. Uh, didn't go really much there on the wheels there. And uh, yeah, on the inside there and the inside there. Uh, Try to get to like most likeliest of places. I also kind of imagined some dirt been splattered up here and maybe some big clumps been taken up along the tracks here and hit the box back in front and a little bit on the side there so yeah try not to overdo it but try to have uh, at least a little bit of dirt going on and it's actually in my opinion pretty close to some of the black and white photos I was looking at so yeah I'm quite happy with it 
the way it stands right now. I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, finished. And I'm going to fix the focus here. Colors are a bit off on my camera. I don't know why. It's not nearly as yellow as it seems. But uh, yeah, it's been a long video already. So I guess I'm just going to wrap it up and uh, say this has been a fun build of this Mang. FT17 uh, built straight out of the box mostly. I on only added the, the little bulkhead in here so it didn't, can't see the vast emptiness of the engine compartment there. <coughs> but yeah, uh, don't know what to say really. I really enjoyed the build. I, I took my time. I mean, I only had basically only had the weathering left when I restarted this again the other day but uh yeah here she is and i'm gonna snap some pics of it on the little photo booth thing that i have and uh, throw up a slideshow after this one and uh i hope you guys at least kind of liked what you saw here and uh i'll catch you on the next one so keep on modeling keep having fun bye